Next on Hunter. Hold it! We found a flashlight with Kay's blood on it. I didn't kill that lady. You know it. Well, is this the man or not? You know that I eventually want to hang all this up. Any little McCall's hopping in Well, around? yes, exactly. Jealous partner is going to curse my case. This is insane. The point is, Hunter's got reasonable doubts, supported by some interesting developments. Freeze! Hurry, <laughs> move! Some of this. What is it? Atomic, California style, vegetarian deluxe ranch pizza. We've got cheese. <laughs> We've got uh, carrots, mushrooms, peppers. And uh, oh, pineapple, and uh, I believe. We've got a little bit of kiwi in here. That's yeah. the grossest pizza oh. I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to say no. A big pass here. I've got my own dinner date anyway. Again? Then mm -hmm. why'd you ask? I guess you had something better, but it's obvious you don't. Get out of here. Bye. I'll save you some. It'll be in your drawer. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? Well, I had the braised duck one time. It was really great. Really? Yeah, really really great. That's great. So how's your dinner? Is it great? Great. Great. Is it really great? Oh, really great. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? Do you think maybe uh, that, that might be their first date? Might be their first date? I think it's definitely their first date. You know what? That guy sounds exactly the way you sounded oh, on our first date. Wait a minute. I wasn't quite that bad, was I? <laughs> I thought you were cute. Well, since this is not our first day. Mm. Jason, I would love to. It's just that I promised to go back to the office and give Hunter a hand tonight. Well, you see, that's what I get when I proposition a cop. I guess that's what I get for going out with a deputy DA who's not willing to plea bargain. Meaning? Meaning? Maybe we can compromise.
Um, I'm Deputy D.A. Leffler. Is there an incredibly good reason for this? Sergeant Hunter's been trying to reach you. Don't you have your beeper? Beeper. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, oh, it's off. Must have been off. Thanks, Bennett. I'm never going to live this down. <laughs> How was dessert? I meant dinner. What'd they do? Put it out on the wires? Yep, it's all over town. Great. What do you got, Barney? That's Kay Dawson, woman of the house. Blunt force trauma of the head. Lots of contusions and abrasions. She fell down the stairs. She probably surprised the burglar when she turned on the automatic alarm. He clubbed her in the head, and that's when she fell down the stairs. It looks to me as though he might have entered through the side patio door here. Any sign of the murder weapon? No, not yet. We got an eyewitness, though. Security guard almost caught him when he came out the front door. He also got a partial on the license plate. Sergeant Hunter? Mr. Dawson. Yeah, this is Sergeant McCall. Hi. Sergeant. Uh, thank you for calling me. I, I, I'm sorry it took so long to get here. We were really busy working. And I ran into a lot of traffic on the... You, you wouldn't have thought there'd been traffic like Mr. Dawson, we need you to Ten identify... Ten years ago, you know, there, there was never Mr. traffic Dawson, like that. we need you to identify your wife. I'm sorry. Try to uh, pin down that license. Ah. McCall, Hunter. What's the progress on the Dawson murder? Thomas Orlowski, prime suspect out of nine possibles. We also found his uh, fingerprints on the flashlight that killed Mrs. Dawson. Orlowski, we've had him in here before. Right. Unfortunately, he squirmed away. Hi, Rick. Jason, hi, Ben. Looks like we nailed Tommy good this time. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Got any addresses? Got three of them. Take off, huh? OK, we're out of here. You take Silver Lake, I'll take Marvis and Venice. All right. See you. All right. Yeah. You know, I know this fantastic little Ecuadorian restaurant down in Silver Lake. What do you say? Bust a punk, eat some food? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're crazy. Yep. About you, baby. I'll see you. Hi. Wait up. We're positively beaming today, aren't we? <laughs> Is it that obvious? Uh huh. Mm. Well. Well, what? Well, is this the man or not? <laughs> I 
don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I'm about 60% sure. 60 well, yeah. I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see. You know, time will tell. You know that I eventually want to hang all this up here, you know? Yeah. I'm serious. I want to be able to have a poem that I can share with somebody and, you know, those barbecues Barbecue. on the, yeah, on the weekends, stuff like that, you know? Tiny little McCall's hopping well, around. Well, yes, exactly. And maybe Jason is the man that um, I can share that with. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. Oh. Of course, you know that that means that you will be losing the very best partner that you ever had. You think you can handle that? Well, I think so only if I'm the bridesmaid. Oh, I see. So nice little lavender chiffon number, something like that. No, actually, I was thinking of something in lime green, you know, maybe the helmet with maybe a rhinoceros horn coming out here. <laughs> Open up, police. Uh, Tommy Orlowski doesn't live here anymore, does he? No. Didn't think so. Open up. You got nothing on me. Really? That's what they all say. You're under arrest. Get up. Sixteen burglary arrests. Two convictions. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Thanks. Got quite a career going here, Tommy. Yeah, well, it's nothing to be proud of, but at least I'm not on welfare. I really want you to reconsider. I'm totally against this interview. The man's talking to murder beef, and I'm clean. I want to hear what he has to say. Just settle down, Sydney. I can deal with this. OK, Tommy, where were you when Kay came out of her bedroom? Upstairs? I was downstairs. I didn't know the lady was home. I heard a noise. I said, will you look at my rap sheet? I'm not a hot prowl man. I didn't know anybody was home. I heard a noise, so I split. End of story. I don't think so. You see, someone hit Kay in the head and pushed her down the stairs. Well, it was somebody else because it wasn't me. Really? We found a flashlight in the neighbor's backyard with Kay's blood on it. So? Also your fingerprints. Well, that's impossible! Hey, come on. Watch that. Sit down. Interview over. No, it's not, sit. Tom, you're not going any place until you talk to me. All right, I'll cop to those other jobs. Shut up. But I didn't kill anybody, and that's the truth. I'm wasting my time, boys. Will you look at my Tommy, record? Damn it. I have looked at your record. I don't have any assault beefs. I'm strictly non-violence. That's my policy. Should have stuck to it. through this whole thing again from the top and this time tell me everything I'd say it's time I hang Tommy Orlowski's scalp on my refrigerator door I love it when you talk dirty to me <laughs> go get him tough guy is the man you saw coming out of the house in this room yes would you please identify him? That's him next to defense counsel. 
in a plaid shirt and gray pants. Let the record show that the witness identified Thomas Orlowski. You looked at a thumbprint and three fingerprints. Did you match them to any particular individual? The prints match those of Thomas Orlowski. The evidence is entirely circumstantial. Will you entertain a bail motion? Your Honor, I'd hardly call a murder weapon covered with a defendant's fingerprints circumstantial evidence. This is a capital offense, and I strenuously oppose any form of bail. Your Honor. The court agrees. Your bail motion is denied. <sighs> Don't worry about it. We'll cop the second degree. You'll be up for parole in time. penalty the law provides. The death penalty? The members of this community must feel safe in their own homes, women especially. Mr. There Leffler, you go. can you give us some idea as to how... You know, I tried him three years ago on a residence burg, but he walked because of a search and seizure problem. You know, Sid Dombrower, he's a damn sharp defender. He, um, he and Orlowski go way back, but this time around, they're not going anywhere. Jason, are you talking about revenge here? I thought you were trying to make the community safer for women. I think I'm going to have to reconsider about you. <laughs> Is that what you think? Yeah. I think maybe I should do something to uh, possibly redeem my good name, don't you? Well, yes, I think you should. <laughs> here. Oh! Oh, oh, honey. oh gosh. I'm sorry. Oh, Hurts, boy. Huh? Mm, could you be careful? You're dealing with a very delicate instrument there. I know. Here, oh. I'll make it feel better. I what? Oh. oh, that feels better. Does it feel better? Mm, do that again. Mm, that's feeling, make it feel a little bit better? That's feeling, that's feeling a lot better. Do it again. Just I know how to make it feel a whole lot better. You do? Yeah. I do, too. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. mm, I'm feeling great now. Get him out of here. I'm not talking to him. I'm not talking to you. Me? Not you, him. Tommy. Don't Tommy me, you Judas bastard. Get him out of here. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to look at him. You sure inspire your clients, don't you? I ought to object to this. Look, you can object all you want, okay? I'm talking to him, and I'm talking to him alone. You need me, I'll be right outside. Yeah, right. He thinks I did it. Well, that seems to be the general consensus, doesn't it? Look, I'll admit to every job I've done since junior high school. I'll admit to every job I've done since junior high school. I'll take you on the grand tour. I, there must be 2,000 of them. But I never laid a finger on anybody. You proved that in court, didn't you? Look, I freaked out in there. OK, I mean, they're only trying to bury me in there. I'll take a polygraph. I'll take it right now. I didn't murder that woman. I didn't even know she was home. Well, even if I did give you a polygraph, Tommy, it's not admissible in court. I'm doing it for you. Didn't kill that lady. And you know it. In your gut. Boy, I thought I was early. What you got? Oh, nothing. I'm gonna go talk to uh, James Dawson. Why? We've got a lot of work to do on this drive by. No, now. I know. We'll get it done. I just want to go see him. He's called and said something about some property missing from his house or something. I'll see you later. Sorry, Mr. 
Mr. Dawson took the day off to make the funeral arrangements for his wife. I thought I told you when you called. No, no, you did, Caroline. It's just that I thought I might come by and see if I could talk to somebody about Mrs. Dawson. A couple of questions. Well, there's Susan Stevens, our manager. She worked a lot with Mrs. Dawson. I think she's in Mr. Dawson's office right now. Oh, well, great, sure, dude. Thanks. Miss Stevens? Sergeant Hunter. Sergeant. Hi. Susan. Okay. I'm the manager here. Uh, I was kind of expecting to talk to James Dawson today, if I could. I'm afraid he's not in today, but I'm sure he'll be here tomorrow. Mm, okay. Uh, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, what is it you people do here, anyway? Well, we developed software for industrial robotics. About five years ago, we opened up the entire Asian market. We now sell systems to both China's, Korea, even Japan. The Pacific Rim is the future, you know. Really? And we'll be there. Good. <laughs> sound like a bad corporate film, don't I? No, not at all. I, uh, I assume uh, James Dawson owns the company. He does now. Kay was always the heart of the operation. She created the company about 15 years ago. James came on shortly after they were married, about five years ago. I came on board a few months after that. Uh, Kay Dawson, a nice woman? A strong woman. If you haven't already heard, uh, Kay and James did have their differences about running the company. God, I think it is just awful what happened. I miss her already. I can understand that. Well, I'll uh, come back another time. Thanks. Thank you. See you, Susan. Good luck. How's it going? Great. Hunter. Yeah, it's Barney. Finished with the Dawson murder. Got some interesting news. Great. Be right over. I could use a little bit of help here, you know. Can't wait. Yeah. See you later. Thanks. Bruises under both arms, huh, Barney? Yeah, kind of hard to do falling downstairs. Yeah. How would somebody get bruises like that? Well, it is consistent with somebody dragging her a short distance. Like from her bedroom to the top of the stairs? That would do it. She also had an awful lot of tranquilizers in her blood. Enough to sleep through an earthquake. Or a burglary. It was no secret the Dawsons fought like cats and dogs, Charlie. James Dawson was having an affair with Susan Stevens, the manager of his company. It's completely irrelevant. Yeah, and Kay Dawson's body had bruises all over it, indicating that she could have been dragged from her room. She was also loaded with tranquilizers. Orlowski killed Kay Dawson. It's as clear as a bell to me. I gave Tommy a polygraph. The examiner feels that Tommy's innocent. A polygraph? That's 20th century witchcraft. I've got a murder weapon with Orlowski's fingerprints all over it. Maybe it was a frame. Who knows? Wait a minute. Now, this is crazy. Do you realize this will ruin us in court? If Dombrower tells a jury about your damn polygraph, it doesn't matter what the judge will say. They'll never forget it. Who the hell are you working for, the public defender? You think Dawson killed his wife? That's a strong possibility, John. Look, individually, what Hunter has isn't much, but uh, collectively, I think it makes for a kind of weird wrinkle. Let's continue this investigation. Thank you, Hunter. Captain, this is insane. We, we finally got this guy. What, what, what is the point? The point is Hunter's got reasonable doubts, supported by some interesting developments. I think that's good enough for me. Charlie, I can't count the times that I have built probable cause to keep those creeps you send me off your street. Jason, I don't owe you anything for doing the job you're paid for. We're going to follow this one out. What's going on here? Why did you keep me in the dark? Because it's Jason's case, and I felt as though you were too close to it. 
We have worked on other cases before. It's never been a problem. No, I know, but I think Jason's making a personal vendetta out of this thing. He just doesn't want to compromise. He's seen enough killers get off with just a slap on the wrist and then go out and murder somebody else. And you've seen it, too. I know that. And both of us have seen innocent people suffer because of an overaggressive DA. Now, I think we should follow the leads and see where it takes us. Hey, you have a point. OK, you said that the Dawsons fought a lot, right? Right. Well, I'll go talk with their attorneys and see if I can find out what the stakes were. OK, I'll re-examine the murder scene and go by Tommy to see if I missed anything. OK. Listen, uh, just one thing. If all we come up with are dead ends, let's just be real careful along the way, just for Jason's sake, OK? Sure. Absolutely. Right. See you later, partner. Didi, Devane didn't budge. Your jealous partner is going to curse my case. Jason, that's not it at all. It's just that we have to follow through on the leads, you know? I'm. Uh, we have to. We're talking about a man's life here. Jason? Hey, I gotta go. I couldn't believe you either. It's really starting to look like Dawson had a strong motive for killing his wife. It'll be real interesting to see what Hunter comes up with. Jason, are you listening to me? Yeah, I'm listening, Dee Dee. It's just that every time I see you, it gets a little worse. Well, yeah, worse from your point of view in the case, but 
You know, the bottom line here is I'm just trying to get at the truth. And I'm trying to maintain it. Maintain the fact that Orlowski is the one that killed Kate Dawson. That is my job. And I'm just trying to do my job. Jason, can't you just at least be open to the possibility here of an alternative? It's getting late, and uh, I'm really swamped. We'll get together tomorrow. Trouble on the home front? I'd rather not talk about it. You know, if you call one of those 976 party lines, I'll help. I'd expect that from you. What'd you find? Well, I talked to Kay's attorney. He said that Kay and James Dawson were at each other's throats continuously. Said they had a prenuptial agreement that uh, cut Dawson out of everything in case of divorce. Yeah, but would that be cause enough for him to kill his wife? Uh, I don't know. With Kate out of the picture, Dawson retained control of the company. It's worth millions. Uh -huh. You miss anything at the crime scene? You know, I think it's highly improbable that uh, Tommy could have flown out the front door like the security guard said, and else he had a key to the front door of that house. I thought you said he went in and out through the side windows. I think that was just a mask his M.O. Here you go. Thanks. I think Tommy somehow gets keys to these houses. I also think he has an accomplice. Really? Yeah. Well, I went to Tommy's house to check to see if he might have any type of machinery to duplicate keys. I ran into a blonde woman. Now, she took off before I could grab her. But I got her license plate, and I ran it. Car belonged to Tommy. Guy's facing the gas chamber. It's no time to try to hide an accomplice. Unless he cared a great deal about it. <laughs> One hell of a lot. How do you think James Dawson fits into this? Well, let's see. If James Dawson wanted to kill his wife, he'd have to figure up a way to frame Tommy for it. Yeah, but to do that, he had to know exactly when and where Tommy was going to break in. I mean, basically, he had to be able to predict it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we have to do. Well, we can start by uh, going to the six burglaries that Tommy admitted to in the neighborhood. Begin by interviewing the housewives, see if there's some way we can connect what they were doing with Tommy breaking in and having access to the house keys. OK, I'll round them up. You talk to them. On the day of the break-in, can you tell me where you were and what you were doing? I had breakfast at the Bel Air Hotel and spent the rest of the morning with Sam. My personal trainer. I see. Then um, it was lunch at the Ivy. And, well, it was Wednesday, so I had a facial at the Beverly West. Um, then I went to Trump's for high tea. That's, that's nice. You ought to go there sometime. Yeah, maybe I will one day. Brunch at the Polo Lounge, and then I did some shopping on Canon. I bought a new skirt for next season. Then I went to the salon, Beverly West. Then I'm pretty sure I took Maurice for shots. <sighs> Maurice, your son? No, my dog. Say hello to the policeman, Maurice. Uh... <laughs> dog in your purse. I had lunch at the Four Seasons, uh, and then I took a walk along Rodeo. I might have picked a little something up, I'm not sure. And then uh, I went to Beverly West for a facial. Of course. All six of the victims had an appointment at the same facial salon the day that Tommy broke into their homes. That sounds promising. Grab Hunter, get yourselves a mud pack. drives a white Nissan? Uh-huh. Yeah. Is she here? Yeah. She's in the back. Yeah, that's her. Thanks.
Hi, Christy. You finally meet, huh? I'm Sergeant Hunter. This is Sergeant McCall. I saw you yesterday at Tommy's. You were going out as I was going in. I, I don't know Tommy. Well, it's funny. The car you were driving is registered to him. Tommy must care for you an awful lot. He's willing to be put away forever to keep you out of it. If you feel the same, it's time to talk the truth. He told me not to say anything. He doesn't want anything bad to happen to me. I'm so worried about him. Things have changed now, Christy. You might be able to help him with this case. We think Tommy may have been framed for the murder. The ladies always tell me what they're doing that night. If they're going to a party or something. So Tommy had this idea. I, I, I made an impression of the keys while the, while the ladies were soaking. And, and Tommy made the keys from that. Then he went over to their houses at night. He broke the window so the police wouldn't know how he got in. And that's where you got Kay Dawson's key when he broke into her house. But that's what was so weird, the picture in the paper of Mrs. Dawson, the lady who got killed. That wasn't the Mrs. Dawson I took the keys from. Hi, Caroline. It's me again. Mr. Dawson in? Uh, in his office with Miss Stevens. Yeah. I'll just tell him that you're... Oh, so this is what you guys were doing the night of the murder. What are you talking about? Well, after you figured out Tommy's M.O., you sent Susan here to the salon as your wife, with your keys in her purse. Oh, uh, that's just not true. Uh-huh. You drugged your wife so she couldn't hear Tommy come in. Then you smacked her in the head and pushed her down the stairs. I was here. James. No, you turned the alarm on, and then you came here. Excuse me, what about the flashlight? James, don't say you could have else. taken the flashlight out of Tommy's truck at any time. You know something? You're crazy. You both have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Number five, step back, please. All of you, please remain facing forward. Please remain facing forward. I'm sorry. What do you mean you're sorry? I don't recognize anyone. What do you expect? Jason. Christy, just take one more look. Are you absolutely sure that the woman who made the appointment as Mrs. Dawson isn't in the room? No, I did look three times. She isn't in there. Release Mr. Dawson and Miss Stevens, please. Of course, it was a real Mrs. Dawson that came to see you. You just didn't recognize her from the newspaper, that's all. Let's just consider this case officially closed, shall we? And get on to the more important issues, like solving crimes. Maybe we missed something here. Maybe Jason's been right the whole time. We have missed something. Would you look at one more thing for us? It's her. That's who I got the keys from. That's who said she was Mrs. Dawson. You have something to tell me, Caroline? About? Beverly West, facial salon. I am so sorry. I did not mean to. Miss Stevens told me to. Oh, I'll pay them back. Susan set up the appointments, didn't she? A bunch of them. They were a present for Mrs. Dawson. Susan paid for them in advance. Right. And then she told you Kay couldn't go. Is that right? Uh-huh. And then she sent you instead. That's right. 
and to tell them that I was Mrs. Dawson and so they wouldn't go to waste. And then I was supposed to tell them that uh, I was going out of town that day and I needed a refund on the rest of the appointments. Now, did anybody give you any house keys? Whose car did you take? Mr. Dawson's. She told me to get it washed. Is Mr. Dawson or Susan in the building? They were. They left together. Thank you. You cannot deny that you wanted to kill her. That's all you've talked about for the last five years. Talked days. about it? Yes, but you actually did it. I get things done. You just whine about them. You, don't you understand? You're going to get caught. No. No, James. We are going to get caught. You see, it's only a matter of time before they figure this whole thing out. And when they do, nobody will believe that you were not in this up to your neck. treat me this way. We don't have time to go searching for your manhood. Why should I give up a fortune? The company's mine Come now. And where will you take it without me or your wife? Hey, I didn't need her. I don't need you. Somebody has to yank your chain. Don't talk to me that way. Let go of me. Not leaving here. Fancy moves, Dawson. This is... It's not what it looks like. Really? It looks like a dead body to me. Susan Stevens saw Mr. Olowski's girlfriend lift the keys from her client's purse. We believe that she and James Dawson conspired against Dawson's wife. What's the charge? First degree murder. What do you think will happen to Mr. Orlowski? Well, as you know, he's going to be held for burglary and the illegal. Yeah, the perfect frame. But as you'd expect, it's enough to fool me. Do you think the judge will be tough? Jason, I think that you let a personal grudge get the best of you Mr. here. Oh. No, I got taken in. It was not the perfect frame. I tried to show you that. You refused to even look at it. Do you understand that my career demands that I have to prosecute criminals to the, to the full extent of the law? You blinded yourself to the truth. You refused to listen to anyone or anything that threatened your possibility of moving up the ladder. You wouldn't even listen to me. What does that say? I was just doing my job. I think we're talking about choices here. Dee Dee, I don't want to lose you. But I think we operate from different places. Maybe. Maybe we're just different kinds of people.
guess it's good to find these kind of things out now instead of later. It's just... Ouch, you know?